you have no idea how, hmm, how should I put this? You have no idea how like, What's going on everyone? My name is Kyle and today we're talking about every class you'll take in the industrial engineering major. So I'm basically going to talk about this in three different categories. The first category is going to be classes that you have to take kind of, not necessarily before you're in engineering, but they're supposed to be taking, taken before you get there. So like these are all your math, sciences, and like general elective classes. The second category is going to be engineering classes that aren't IE specific. There's still classes that you have to take as an industrial engineer, but they aren't actual industrial engineering classes. And then the third category are going to be all industrial engineering classes. And I'll go through all these one by one. And I won't be able to talk like tremendously on all of them. One, because this video would become way too long. And two, I haven't even had all the classes, so I can't, I don't want to speak on something I don't know that much about. So let's get started by talking about math, because this seems to be one of the biggest subjects people want to know about when they're coming into engineering. How much math do I have to take? And it just happens that to be a great industrial engineer, you don't have to be great at math. Like they don't completely correlate like that. So let's go over these one by one, which math you're gonna have to take. And it's college algebra, college trig, calc one, calc two, calc three, and then differential equations, or we call it calc four, but I know most schools don't. And that's a total of six classes, six different math classes. So if you did one a semester, obviously six semesters, but that could be split up between summer semesters, regular semesters, whatever. Uh, this is probably this is probably one of the biggest things that people will have a problem with. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, as far as what um, I've experienced, what everyone around me has talked about, Calc 2 is the hardest. It seems to be the one that weeds out the most students. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but if you make it past Calc 2, they say Calc 3 is a little bit easier because if you understand Calc 2, it's just adding another dimension on and that makes it Calc 3. And then, uh, I don't know, I've heard some people having trouble with Calc 4, but not as much as with Calc 2. So those are all the math classes you have to take. Let's move on to general science classes you're gonna be taking. And that would be chemistry. I, I'm, I tend to want to say like the number here, like we call it Chem 115. but so you need to take your fundamentals of chemistry course, which I haven't heard is like that big of a deal. And you need to take physics, your fundamentals of physics of the physical world. Now, at our school, keep in mind that your school may be a little different, but at our school you have the option of, you have to take each of those fundamental courses and then you have to pick one to progress in. So you can progress farther in physics, farther in chemistry, or you can even take in a biology class. Essentially, you have to take those two fundamental classes of physics and chemistry, and then you get to pick which one you want to take further. So you can take the next level of physics, or you can take the next level of chemistry. And I've heard a lot of hard things about the next level of chemistry, so a lot of people at our school tend to take the next level of physics. I'm just also going to throw in two other classes, which would be these aren't even science classes, but they're just general classes that we have to take in our major. And it's microeconomics and macroeconomics. So microeconomics is gonna be about like business, supply and demand. And macroeconomics is gonna be like uh, GDP and world economies and stuff about jobs all around the world. Depending on which school you go to is gonna decide the order of your curriculum. And I know it sounds weird, but at my school, I can take math courses I can be in like calc 2 and calc 3 and calc 4 and still be in like ie later industrial engineering classes because I don't need to finish all my math curriculum before I get started in my department in engineering but at some schools I know that they do make you so in some schools you'll have to do all of your math and sciences and then move into your uh, core engineering classes but I'm gonna just go with it as if it's at my school just because that's the only system I really know so uh, the next class I want to go over are like your intro to engineering classes. And that's like engineering 101, 102, and an orientation engineering class that we have that you may not have. So engineering 101 is just general uh, team project work. So like we had to build a bridge. I know some people make like turbines and you write a report and you do a presentation on it and you learn fundamentals of Excel and analyzing data in that class. Uh, engineering 102 here is uses MATLAB which is a mathematics coding program and it has a 
not a mathematics coding program, but has a specific, um, how do I put it? It has a specific application towards math, and that's how they angle the class as well. So they make you do, they, they have a focus on at least Calc 2 math, and you have to uh, work on integrating that into whatever project they choose at the time. So I remember I was do, doing a special 102 class over the summer, and we programmed robots to play tic-tac-toe, and then we did a few other projects that integrated more math into it. Our orientation to engineering class, I've heard they don't have at a few other schools, but it was super, super, super helpful at ours, like crazy helpful. Like uh, I know a lot of people switch majors at that point because you coming in, you some people know about engineering, some people don't know about engineering, but at the end of the day, when you leave that class, you had a presentation on every department of engineering that our schools our school offers and you got the chance to meet a few of the faculty members and it really kind of sways your opinion because you're coming in as a freshman you're not sure exactly what kind of engineering you want to do so they pretty much come in and do presentations for you and uh, I don't know it just really helps now I want to talk about a few classes that are department specific but aren't in the industrial department so these are classes that you still need to take in order to graduate with an industrial engineering degree but they're classes that are in other departments. For example, the first one that I have here is Introduction to Electrical Engineering, and this also has a lab with it. And in this class, you'll analyze and solve electrical circuits and calculations. So just throwing this out there, a lot of industrial engineers that I've talked to um, struggle more with the classes that aren't in our department. And I think that's mainly because a lot of people who come into industrial engineering aren't looking for the super technical background like we want a technical background a just technical enough background to be able to do what we can in the operation sector and um, give us a better understanding and background but we just tend to shy away most industrial engineers tend to shy away from classes that are super heavy math and technic technicalities so the next two classes specifically give a lot of industrial engineers trouble that I know of and that's statics which is a mechanical and aerospace department class and mechanics of materials and that's also a mechanical and aerospace class and uh, statics is a class that pretty much you look at systems that aren't moving at all that are completely static and then you pull out like the forces and the sum of the forces and be able to calculate stuff from there mechanics of materials I can't really speak too much on because I haven't had the class and I'm a little I could read it just off the syllabus but I'm a little skeptical on exactly even like what they'll be talking about as I read through it um, okay, here's another good one. So after you take those two classes, which are required, the two MAE classes, you will also need to be taking at least one more MAE class, but it's up to your choice. And our school has three options. You can take dynamics, thermodynamics, or fluid mechanics. So from my knowledge, dynamics seems to be the most difficult of all of those. I'm not exactly sure why I haven't taken any of these yet, but just from hearing people around all the time, nobody likes taking dynamics. It's like way more difficult. So it's usually between thermodynamics or fluid dynamics, and then it comes down to personal preference. All right, so now we're gonna move into that third category I was talking about, which are industrial engineering specific classes. And these are probably what a lot of you guys are wanting to hear. And I'm gonna start with um, kind of like the most basic classes. So ones that you'll be taking, not even basic, but the ones you'll be taking, um, if you're lucky, hopefully like by your sophomore year, and then you'll be taking the rest of these like your junior year and your se senior year. And I'll, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna break them down by what you're supposed to be taking your sophomore year, your junior year, and then your senior year. And I'm not gonna talk through all of them. So I'm gonna put them all up on screen here, and then I'm gonna read through the ones that like, I've had and everything like that. <clears throat> so the first one that you're supposed to have your sophomore year, which I've, all ha I've had all of them, is Fundamentals of Industrial Engineering. And then you're supposed to have Basic Engineering Statistics, and engineering management systems. And in Fundamentals of Industrial Engineering, we talked about uh, basic analysis approaches. In engineering statistics, you learn about simple distribution curves, hypothesis testing, and confidence intervals. And anyone who's had like a normal statistics course, you'll also, you'll clearly understand what that is without having that class, but they usually want you to having an engineering specific version of that class. So uh, it's more application based like what you'll be doing. So it shouldn't be difficult if you already know what statistics is. Uh, and then in the engineering management systems class, you uh, analyze work procedures and you recommend, this was actually super, super useful for me. I love this class. Um, we had this class and then we had a lab for this class where we actually implemented everything that we talked about. So you, you watch different work procedures. We did case studies on Starbucks. 
um, we did case studies on a lot of different companies in learning about how like these small changes in their system would save them millions of dollars and will actually change like the customer experience around. It's just really interesting stuff. Now I'm gonna move on to the junior uh, industrial engineering level classes. And here's where we get, like I've probably had about half of these. Um, so we have, I'm just gonna put them up actually and then read through the ones that I have had. So if you look at IE314 here, that's advanced analysis of engineering data. And that's pretty much a continuation of the basic statistics I talked about just a second ago. And in this class, you learn more about linear regression models, variance, and it's super, it's way more practical as far as like how many, um, oh no, here's a good way to put it. It's, it's way more practical in the sense of you actually start digging into the software you're going to be using in industry and uh, you do a lot more case studies. Computer application, industrial engineering, we pretty much learned how to code in Visual Basic. Now, I'm sure some of your guys' schools like all have different coding classes for the industrial engineering department, and I'm not sure if you guys all use Visual Basic, but that's what we used, and we learned how to integrate that, like make forms and integrate that with Access, SQL, different stuff like that. It's a really, mm, it's a class that a lot of people end up like just getting by in just because a lot of people don't like to code and they're pretty narrow-minded about it. And I kind of just got by it and kind of like learned a little bit of it. It was it was pretty difficult for me. But if you can at least learn how to like make forms in that class and how to integrate that with different databases, the database idea is huge, especially with where the world's going right now. Like this class was extremely valuable. I already know friends who were able to use it in internships. It was it's a pretty big deal. Production planning, controlling. This class was actually this man. I, I feel like I'm just gonna say this about every class, but this class was huge for me too. I remember I did my internship first, like just with my sophomore level classes, and then I had this class and everything just started clicking with me. Like it started all making sense. In this class, you learn about product structures, building materials, scalability with like designs and different products, and uh, like dealing with competition. It was a, at our school it was super, super, super entrepreneurial based, which I really liked. I just thought it was cool all around. It had, uh, it had a unique twist to it. It was just fun. It was a nice class. Next one I had was engineering economy, the one at the very bottom here. That's where you essentially look at project economics, depreciation, when to replace machinery, how to replace it, how much it's going to cost, everything like that. Actually, I think human factors in engineering, I haven't had it, but it's just a basic ergonomics class. And you deal with average human um, lengths. Like for example, mm. so for example, the first thing I kind of think about that would probably relate to this is like countertops. Like you walk into uh, you walk into your kitchen or something, you aren't thinking like really like, man, how tall is this countertop? How many inches is it? Is it? Why is it that many inches? What about this chair? How much can I move? This chair? Like it, it takes into consideration all the average human lengths and uh, what the best fit of these uh, items and everyday things should be. Burn this gasoline and set it on fire, fire, fire. Now we'll move into our fourth year senior level courses, and this is where I'm really going to start to show my ignorance here, because um, I haven't had a lot of these classes, and I've heard of them, and they're kind of self-explanatory by name, eh, kind of, not really. So like, I'll just skim by a few of them here. And we have project management for engineering, plant layout, material handling, simulation by digital methods, design of productive systems 1 and 2. So I know that design of productive systems 1, which is IE 471 here, is a internship class that we have here at WVU. I'm pretty sure it's unique to WVU as far as what we require. And it's pretty much, we require uh, all of our industrial engineering majors to have an internship. And this class goes in parallel with that. And you do like regular checkups and you do reports on like what your impact has been for the company so far. And you give regular calls to our advisors to make sure that uh, you're doing everything that's needed and uh, giving them as many recommendations as possible and I just know it's pretty cool. I haven't had the class yet but I have a few friends who have it and they say it's nice. And last but not least we're going to go into our very last two tech electives here. So this could range in a lot of different ways. You can pretty much do whatever you want but you pretty much pick two technical electives to pursue and they could be in any department really. It doesn't have to be uh, industrial engineering although if you wanted to you could take an upper level industrial engineering class, I'm pretty sure even some like grad classes, you could probably take one of those. Um, but it's pretty much whatever you want. You could also take an additional dynamics, thermodynamics. I know that some people will actually minor in like a mathematics course and yeah, here it is. That you can minor in a mathematics course for just a few more classes on top of what you've done because we 
as engineering majors, we all we go pretty far down the math route. So just a few more math courses, and you can actually minor in math. I'm not interested in doing it, but if you want to do that, that would also count as tech electives for you. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it as far as that goes. I'm not going to put up all of the additional tech electives. All right, there's a lot of them. Like you can pick from a bunch of them. But I'm just going to put up what I happen to have here on my Excel sheet right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to whoever left a comment or a question or it's kind of weird. Like it has at this point it has 600 views, but something about the 600 views, like it, it seems like a lot to me right now. It seems like a really lot, and I really appreciate. It. But the amount of comment. Brother, I'm gonna burn this gasoline and set it on fire, 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 fire. Oh, someone sees it, bless me.